Hello again. Today we need to stain our cells. So to remind you, it's A549 and we have the 12 well plate. In each well we have 200 microliters of DMM and we are going to add the uh, fluorescent dyes directly to these DMM. So we start with the uh, rhodamine and the stock solution is 1 uh, millimole per liter. And we actually know the uh, working concentration or CW, which is 50 nanomoles per liter. So knowing this working concentration, what we do, we calculate how much or how many times we need to dilute uh, the stock solution. And the stock solution is one millimolar, which is 1000 micromolar or 1 million nanomolar. And because we operate with nanomolar uh, concentration in our working concentration, then we uh, stay with nanomoles per liter. So we divide it by 50 nanomoles per liter. So we cancel these uh, measurement units and we are left with 100,000 divided by 5, which is 20,000. And this is how much we need to dilute our stock solution. So we know this volume here. And I'm going to show you two ways to calculate. One way is imperfect and second one is clean. So I'm starting with the imperfect one. Uh, from the formula we know that initial concentration times initial volume is equal to working concentration times working volume. Okay, so these two values we already know. These are 50 nanomoles per liter times uh, 200 microliters. And this thing here is also known, which is 1 uh, millimole per liter. And from this formula we can find the initial volume or the volume of our stock solution that we need to add to our final solution. Okay, so it will be 20,000. Value, so we leave it like this and we really obtain the microliters in the end. So we have one hundredth of one microliter. Of course, we cannot take uh, this value uh, with a pipette, uh, usual pipette. So what we do, we perform uh, first dilution and then from this first dilution, we go to our working uh, solutions. So we take our stock solution and we perform the first dilution from it. So let's say that uh, this concentration is 100 times less than the stock solution. So what we do, we take uh, the Eppendorf tube and we pour 99 microliters of DMAM and we add one microliter of our stock solution. So what happens here? We will have uh, the dilution factor equal to one microliter plus 99 microliters divided by one microliter. And it is 100 times. So it's 100x dilution. Okay, so what we do uh, here, we reduce the concentration. So C1 would be equal to CW divided by 100. And of course it is 10 micromoles per liter. Okay, so from this 10 micromoles per liter, we can easily go to our 50 nanomoles. And 
To do so, we perform a new calculation, which is again CW, VW. This is 200 microliters. This is uh, 50 nanomoles per liter. So in total, we have here 10 thousand uh, microliters times uh, nanomoles per liter. Okay, so from here we identify this V1, which is volume, and it is 10,000 divided by 10,000 because micromoles become 10 to the power of 3 nanomoles. And because we have 10 here, we also have 10 here. So V1 here would be 10,000 divided by 10,000. In this case, of course, microliters. So we need to add one microliter to our DMAM so that we obtain the working solution. But we do it after the first dilution because going straight from the stock solution is impossible here. Okay, so this is um, the imperfect way of calculating. So if you uh, calculate now, so we had 200 microliters and then we add one microliter, the volume becomes 201 microliters. And of course, if you take uh, the real concentration now, it will be a little less. So the real concentration is a little less than the working concentration. So why it happens? Because um, the one microliter addition to the final volume creates this uh, imbalance. So what we should do, I mean, if you go to the chemist lab, you will need to calculate uh, the real volumes. So in this case, of course, so we have 200 microliters that are already in our well. So we have 200 microliters and they are in the well. So our final solution, uh, final volume of the solution will be this value plus something that we add with our stock. Okay, so now let's perform the same uh, calculation. So we have the first dilution and the dilution factor would be 100 here. So we take 99 microliters of DMM and we uh, take one microliter of our stock solution and it uh, the new uh, the new concentration here would be equal to 10 micromoles per liter. So this is the first calculation and the second one would be uh, you know the x here and we add it to 200 okay so the real volume the real final volume or working volume is equal to x plus 200 microliters so from here we could easily calculate the ratio so c1 v1 is equal to 50 uh, nanomoles per liter times x plus 200 and here we have microliters okay so v1 would be times x plus 200 divided by 10,000 and microliters here okay so we start with the cancelling stuff which, uh, that is the same in both sides of the ratio and 5 would be 200 here okay so we are left with x divided by 200 plus 1 so what is cool here is that this v1 is our x value okay so what we have here is x is equal to x 200 plus 1 so we get all x to the to the same side and we obtain x minus x 200 
would be equal to 1 and if you calculate 200x minus x Uh, in this way, you would be able to subtract uh, these x from these 200x, and it is 1. What is this expression here? It gives us 199x divided by 200 would be equal to 1. And of course, from here, x would be 200 divided by 199, and it is slightly more than 1 microliter. So, of course, because we have a uh, so small difference in biology, we can actually take one microliter and get satisfied with that. But in chemistry labs, you might actually want to take the real values here and it would be equal to 1.005. And of course, it's not the same as one microliter for chemists. And if you take bigger values, you will need to adjust these volumes, okay? So this is the two ways that you're going to use in your lab. First one is imperfect when we just add one microliter and get satisfied with that. And the second one is when we have the exact value, okay? So let's switch to the next example. So we have DIOC with a 2 millimolar concentration of the stock solution and uh, the working solution should be 5 micromoles per liter and the uh, working volume is 200. So we calculate both imperfect and clean volumes. So for the imperfect one, again we go from uh, C stock V stock equal to CW, VW, so 5 times 200, and here we have 2000. Okay, so our V stock should be 1000 divided by 2000, which is 0 0.5 microliters. Can you take 0 0.5 microliters? Yes, you could, and in this case, uh, you will have, if you take the imperfect one, you will have 0 0.5 microliters of the DIOC added to your 200 microliters of DMA. And again, if we take the clean calculations, they will be CS times X equal to CW times X plus 200. Okay, so uh, we have concentrations on one side, so CS divided by CW equal to X plus 200 divided by X. So again, we have X plus 200X, sorry, 1. And in this part, we will have a C stock, which is 2000 divided by 5, and it gives you 400. Okay, so we have 400 minus 1 equal to 200 divided by x. If we take this x to this part, we will have x equal to 200 divided by 399. In this case, x would be 0 0.501. So this is the real value or real vo volume that we need to add to our 200 microliters. Okay, next example is TMRE with a stock solution of 1 millimolar concentration and we have the working concentration of 250 nanomoles per liter. Again, we calculate the imperfect first. I already know that to go from stock to the working concentration, we will need to perform one dilution uh, in between. So we take the first dilution with the dilution factor of 100. So again, we take 99 microliters of DMAM and we add one microliter of your stock solution. So we have 100 microliters in total 
and this one microliter of this solution we divide it by 100 so the C1 will be uh, 10 micromoles per liter okay so from this 10 micromoles per liter we can go to our uh, working concentration and to do so we take C1 V1 equal to CW VW so again it's a first imperfect calculation and we take uh, 10 thousand nanomoles per liter so times v1 equal to 250 nanomoles per liter times 200 microliters okay so this times this would be 5 uh, 50,000 and the v1 would be 5 microliters Okay, so in the imperfect calculation, we need to add 5 microliters to our 200 microliters of DMAM. And we are kind of satisfied. As biologists, we, we are satisfied with this new concentration. Okay, so if we take the clean calculation, it will be C1 times X equal to uh, CW times x plus 200 and again we have the same ratio so c1 divided by cw which is equal to 1 plus 200 x so c1 again is 10,000 divided by 250 so 1000 divided by 250 is equal to mm, 40 and here we have 40 minus 1 equal to 200 divided by x so x from here is 200 divided by 39 and it will be equal to 5.13 microliters so this is a big difference so if you take 5.13 and compare it to 5 microliters you have a lot of substance that we lose with these 13 hundredths of the microliter okay so in the clean calculation you will need to add this volume okay next we have the host and the stock solution is 10 milligrams per milliliter so we are working with 1 microgram per milliliter and again we calculate both calculations so I already see that the stock solution is 10,000 times a higher concentration than the working solution okay so from here we can say that V1 would be equal to VW divided by 10,000 and it is 200 microliters divided by 10,000 okay so we have 150s of the microliter of course we cannot take this so we perform the first dilution and then get to our uh, our working solution so let's say that we dilute it again 100 times first uh, if you take it like this so dilution factor again is 100 so the first 99 plus 1 will give us the 100 micrograms per milliliter concentration so this is our c1 and second we calculate again from uh, from the imperfect way so 100 times x will be equal to 1 times 200 and x would be 2 microliters so you add these 2 microliters to our 200 microliters and obtain a rough uh, concentration of the host so let's calculate the perfect one which gives you 100 
x equal to 1 times x plus 200. Okay, so here you will have 100 minus 1 equal to uh, 200 divided by x, which is x equal to 200 divided by 99. And it is equal to 2.02 microliters. So this is the real value or the real volume that you need to add to your DMM. Okay, so we have the first mixture. So we have uh, rhodamine, which is 50 nanomoles per liter, and the host, which is one microgram per milliliter working, con working concentration. So we know that we perform 100x dilution for both of them. So the C1 for rhodamine, rhodamine is equal to 10 micromoles per liter and C1 for our host is equal to 100 micrograms per milliliter. Okay, so these two guys um, these are for our C1 V1 concentration that is equal to CW VW. So what we know here, we actually know their C1s for both of them. We also know the CW for both of them. And finally, we have the same uh, working volume. Okay, so this is actually very simple to calculate. So we go C1R V1R equal to CWR times VW. The same goes for our uh, host, which is C1 host V1 host equal to CW host times VW. So these two guys are the same. Okay, so what we do, we calculate um, for both of them, we calculate the volumes and they are okay. So we start with the rhodamine, which is 50 nanomoles per liter times 200 microliters divided by 10,000 nanomoles per liter, and it gives you one microliter. So for the host, you have. 100, oh, sorry, 1 times 200 microliters divided by 100 micrograms per uh, milliliter, and it gives you 2 microliters. So we need to add 1 microliter of rhodamine and 2 microliters of diluted host to our 200 microliters to double stain our cells. But as you understand, we have the imperfect way of calculating now. So what we do, uh, let's calculate the perfect one. And this is also easy to do. Okay, so let's say that from our rhodamine we add x microliters and from hext we add y microliters and we add it all to our 200 microliters of the DMM. So this would be our final volume. Of course, from here it is easy to uh, write our new equations, which are for the rhodamine uh, 10 micromolar concentration times x, because x is for rhodamine, and it is equal to 5, uh, 50 nanomoles per liter times x plus y plus 200 and for our host we would have 100 micrograms per milliliter times y because y is for v1h and it is equal to 1 microgram per milliliter times x plus y plus 200. Okay, so this is the system of equations and we have two same parts, okay? So let's say that x plus y plus 200 from this equation, the, the lower one, 
is equal to 100 microgram per milliliter times y divided by 1 microgram per milliliter. Of course, we can cancel these measurement units and we are left with 100 y. Okay, so this equation is equal to 100 y. So from the upper equation, we take 10 times 10 to the power of 3 nanomoles x equal to 5, uh, 50 nanomoles per liter times 100 y. Okay, so we can have 150 multiplied and then we divide 10,000 by these 5,000 uh, 5, and it will be equal to 2x equal y. So we know that this 2x is equal to y or x equal to y divided by 2. Of course, we can now replace this x with this y divided by 2. So we are left with x equal to y divided by 2 and here we write y divided by 2 plus y plus 200 equal to 100y. Uh, From here we calculate that x is equal to y divided by 2 and 1.5y minus 100y equal to minus 200. Of, of course, from here, 98.5y um, equal to 200. And y is equal to 200 divided by 98.5, which is 2.03. Okay, so 2.03, and we can now calculate what is x, and it is equal to 2.3, 2.03 divided by 2, which is 115. So we now identified the v1 for rhodamine and v1 for our host. So to obtain the real uh, working concentrations, we need to add this much of rhodamine and this much of host. Okay, and the one that you needed to calculate at home is DIOC plus host plus TMRE with the final volume of 200. Again, we do it in imperfect and perfect ways. And of course, in this case, you will have the system of three uh, unknowns and you go the DIOC 5 micromoles per liter, Hext is 1 microgram per milliliter, and TMRE is 250 nanomoles per liter. So for our DIOC, the C stock would be 2 millimoles per liter. For Hext, it's um, let's calculate from C1 directly. So we have 100 micrograms per milliliter and for TMRE C1 would be equal to 10 micromoles per liter. So C1 here and here means that we went from the stock solution to the first dilution and then from the first dilution to our working solution. Here again we calculate the imperfect way as biologists do. So we have the C stock, V stock, equal to C working, V working. So for our DIOC it will be um, 5 micromoles per liter times 200 microliters divided by uh, 2000 micromoles per liter. And it is 0 0.5 microliters. Okay, so for our V1H, we have 100, so it's 1 times 200 microliters divided by 100, and it is 2 microliters. Finally, we have V1T, which is 250 times 200 
divided by 10,000. And of course, microliters here. So what we have, we have 50,000 divided by 10,000 microliters, and it is 5 microliters. Okay, so for the imperfect calculation, you take 0 0.5 microliters of the DIOC, 2 microliters of Hoechst, and 5 microliters of TMRE. You add them to your 200 microliters DMEM and obtain a rough uh, concentration that you work with. So now let's calculate the perfect one. So what we do, again, we have the working solution. Let's call them X, Y, and Z. So X will be the DIOC plus Y for Hoechst plus Z for TMRE and plus 200 microliters. So this is our uh, working solution. So for each of them in this three component system, we will have the five, uh, sorry, two uh, millimoles per liter times X equal to five micromoles per liter times X plus Y plus Z plus 200. For the second one, we will have 100 times y equal to 1 times x plus y plus z plus 200. Finally, we have 10 micromoles per liter times z equal to 200, oops, 250 nanomoles per liter times x plus y plus z plus 200. Okay, so Again, we first take our x, y, z plus 200 and we calculate it from Hurst. So 100y equal to x plus y plus z plus 200. Okay, so from here we have the new system uh, which gives us two thousand x equal to five times ten to hundred y hundred y equal to x plus y plus z plus two hundred and finally we have uh, ten thousand z equal to two hundred and fifty times hundred y x from here is equal to 500y divided by 2000 and it is y divided by 4. From here z is equal to um, 25,000y divided by 10,000. So 1z is equal to 2.5y. What we do next? We next put the x and z from these values. So our 100y is equal to y divided by 4 plus y plus 2.5y plus 200. Okay, so we take these guys and put them in, in the left side of the equation. So what we have now it's 1, 3.5, 3.75 and 100y minus 3.75y uh, which is equal to 96.5, mm, sorry, 96.25y equal to 200. And from here we have y equal to 2.8 microliters. Okay, so knowing this, um, this equation, we can go to our x and z. So let's start with x. x would be this value divided by 4, which is 0 0.52 microliters. And for our z, it's 2.5 times this value. 
and 2.5 is equal to 4 16 plus 1.4 5 uh, 5 and 2 microliters so if you have the perfect calculation then you will need to add uh, 0 0.52 microliters of your DIOC 2.08 microliters of your Hext and 5.2 microliters of your TMRE adding these to 200 will give you the perfect working concentration for all of the components so I hope this was clear for you um, it is actually a real math and very simple math that you need to apply to your calculations to obtain both imperfect and clean uh, ways to obtain the working concentrations okay thank you all and i will see you goodbye